Hello, hockey fans. The Minnesota Hockey Connection is on the air. We're on the air for the next half hour. I'm Kenny Callagher, along with Jerry Burrow. And Jerry, we had a big tournament in town, a national tournament, the North American Hockey League Robertson Cup, and we uh, we have a champion. We have a winner. We do. We got the Lone Star Brahmas from Dallas, Texas. Is that where well, they're it's from? N- it's really, um, what is it, New Richmond, Texas? or no, It's something like that. It's right on the, it's a suburb but between Dallas and Fort Worth. Okay, down so in the Metroplex. Yes, it's right in the suburbs of right. Dallas. Okay. And Lone Star beat Aston. 3 nothing yesterday at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. They had their game, championship game. That's after these teams uh, played the best out of three. The Lone Stars had a little better chance, I thought, because they only they won their first two games, so they won that series in two nights, so they had Saturday off. Yeah. Where Aston had to play all three. They had to go to three games, so they played... Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Okay. So Aston based in Pennsylvania, on the north uh, east side of Pennsylvania. Okay. All right. And uh, you know, I, I didn't get to any of the games. I wanted to. I just wasn't able to make them. I saw some of the highlights on TV, and I was I was stunned at the uh, lack of attendance. Uh, and, and I think maybe you can look at a, a variety of reasons for that. Uh, these are cities and, and teams that are from outside the area that not too many people right. are familiar with. But Janesville was the closest team, and they're close to 300. They're 300 miles from Duluth. Yeah. So that was the closest in Aberdeen, which is, boy, what would that be, about close to 500. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, you know, it, it would have been nice if they could have got, had better crowds there, but... Uh, there's no question that if uh, the Minnesota Wilderness would have been in this, probably would have, well, you would have certainly had packed nights every night they played. Right. Yeah. Because uh, I say the average crowd each day was 500 people plus scouts yeah. and workers, then you might have 700. Well, let, let's, let's talk about this. You were there. You covered this in depth. Um, what about this prospects game? How did that go? I didn't get too much to see about see it but what it is it's like uh, it's 2001 um, two three and four birth dates so the oldest kids are 16 years old did you, hear, did you 16 15 14 13 then they had uh, they made four teams up and so they played games every day did they have a good turnout was there a good participation uh, yes there was the prospects? Okay. they they had uh they said there was over 100 kids oh nice nice yeah. and these are kids from all over the united states really yes okay. they came in from all over the united states wow. because all, right. all these scouts are there and now, now are they promote do they promote this in the nahl cities where they play well what happens is i think it's on their regular website the North American Hockey League website, because what happens is each team has three tryouts Mm -hmm. during the summer that they do for their own team. So this is just uh, the prospects are to see that are they capable of playing next level in about, you know, some of them are so young, you know, you just don't know, but it's a they give them ideas. Is this a North American Hockey League deal? Or yes. Is this like a, this yes. isn't USA Hockey? No, or? this is North American Hockey gotcha, League. Gotcha. Thing. Well, again, the Heritage was host to the Robertson Cup Finals, and uh, the Lone Star Brahmas are the uh, champions. Any connections here? I see a kid named Kessel on this team. No, there's no kid. But um, I'll show you. Let's see. I'll tell you. Zerbin from um, Elk River. They have a typo there. They've got Manitoba, but that's got to be Minnesota, I would imagine. Yep. Okay. He's from uh, Elk River. And let's see, Rue from uh, Twin Cities. He played He played at uh, Benil his last year, and before that he um, was over in uh, Tatina Grace what down in the cities. Nolan Sullivan. Yeah, he played for Eden Prairie. Okay. And there's a, there's another one that's, that's from the, the Aberdeen team, right? Okay. Yeah, if we would have had the wilderness, you would have you would have had ten Minnesota kids, you know, playing. Yeah. More, so that that hurt a little bit, and um, uh, you know, that's one of the things. You know, this is this tournament hasn't been played at a, a just a site they go to. You know, usually it's on uh, the 
sites of the teams, where the teams that are alive still, the last four teams, they had the top seeded team would get the home field advantage. Mm -hmm. So that's what it used to, when the Wilderness won, they went on the road all the time because they were a lower seed, but they went to like, when they won the championship, they had to go down to Austin and play their games. Yeah. So they won their games down there, two out of three. Yeah. <laughs> but so this is something different, but uh, I was talking to the head officials of the North American Hockey League, and they really loved Duluth. But they said they still have to check out, see what's going on, you know, the whole picture. Because the only negative stuff that was coming out that I heard of is some people complain of, you know, it's not in a major city like Minneapolis, where they can fly into Minneapolis and do it right in that area, but to drive up to Duluth. So some people are complaining about that. And some people complained a little bit about the ticket price. If you're just a regular person for the whole tournament, and the, you can go to the prospect games too, it was $50. So that was six games of, you know, but to me, that's pretty cheap <laughs> for good hockey because half these kids are going to play D1 already. They're mm -hmm. already committed. Wow. So, I mean, it was up and down, you know. It was a lot of perimeter skating and that, but still, that's in every... Hockey, and that's the way hockey is now. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah. I, but the games uh, went, they're good games, every one of them. Uh, like the Lone Stars, they, the first game, they won 3-2 over Janesville. Then the next night was so funny because they, they played with one ref and two linesmen. And they used just one ref. And so that second game with Lone Star and Janesville, it was, oh, it was amazing how many penalties they didn't call okay just a minute but they're letting them play but it was getting out of hand they should have called penalties on both sides you know just to get it under control really but they didn't so when the game ended there was cross checks over the head and oh. everything and, you know and so i don't think uh these guys are going to be roughing in this championship series anymore <laughs> yeah well i mean but like you said though they were short i mean they only had one ref well that's the way they do it yeah I, I think that's. I think they should go the other way. Of I'd rather have two refs and one linesman than yeah one. So I don't understand. I have to ask them. Yeah. Why they do that? Because mm -hmm. it's a different game now. Yeah. And it's a lot faster. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. But then um, Aston to get to the championship. Uh, they the first game that they won four two with an empty netter. So really, it's a one goal game. Then they lost three two in an overtime game. Then they won 3-2 in an overtime Jeez. game. So they're exciting games. Every game was good. Yeah. And so there's five games with two empty netters and all overtime games, yeah. three overtime games. How did Janesville do? Janesville lost their two games, but they okay. they lost 3-2 uh, in the overtime game, and then they won 3-1. I then, mean, they lost 3-1. And then Aberdeen? Aberdeen, won, they, to get there, they... Um, they lost 4-2 um, the first game, won 3-2 in overtime, and then lost 3-2 in and overtime. So, in so okay. they're all good games. Yeah, they keep, they yeah. kept you there at the, you now, know. You were telling me something uh, that I've never witnessed at any type of a hockey game, but uh, there was a young gal that came out and sang the national anthem, and she struggled a bit. Right. And then the next time the national anthem came up, you had uh, this fellow we had on, Alex. No, uh, we, we had, um, there was a guy from, I think his name was, Anderson was the last name, I think, and Mike Anderson, I think his name was, and he sang it the next two Days. No, it was like and Alex then, then Curious. Or curious. Something. He's the okay. sales and communication director for the North American Hockey League. Yeah. So he's working his butt off, doing all everything, putting out press releases and everything. And all of a sudden, in the championship game, now I'll sing in the national anthem, Alex Curious. <laughs> and he and did he's a sing it. Yeah, he did yeah. a good job. And then I was up on top watching, looking, watching the game from the top. I don't know, you know the Heritage Center when you get upstairs? Sure. And you can look straight down yeah. from the fans and that. And they had that as a VIP area. And uh, so we're looking down. All of a sudden I see Alex in the TV a radio booth and that right below. They made oh, okay. a thing for TV and yeah. radio. And so he's doing color for the game too then. Wow. <laughs> so he does everything. Well, that's great. Uh, again, the North American Hockey League, Heather Robertson Cup, 
finals here. Uh, the championship goes to Lone Star, based out of uh, well, the Dallas, Dallas area. area. And uh, anything else you want to share with that team or well, the event? Well, one thing I want to say, I'd give a lot of credit for Jerry DeMail and how all his employees <laughs> They put in 15, 16, 17 hour days every day there, and they did a tremendous job. And you can't, I mean, they did their part. I mean, and they couldn't do better. So if it comes back, it'll be because of the way the Heritage Center did their job. If it comes back to Duluth. And oh, that's great. They're gonna be trying. They just have to figure out if we, if the North American Hockey League liked it that much, but it seems like they did. It's just getting a hotel, you know, it's a big cost to run this tournament. Sure. Yeah. So I'll we'll give them credit there. And I tell you what, I mean, <laughs> I hope it comes back and they get three or four year contract where yeah. they can do it and they can build on it. And if they can get like one of these Minnesota teams in there. Then I think it'll be very successful because any, you know, they got Austin, they got, uh, down in uh, Richfield, they got the Minnesota Magician, Magicians. Yeah. They got over in, in La Crosse, they got Cooley Region. Oh, sure. And, I mean, so there's a lot of close teams. So Boy, it would be something if uh, Minnesota Magicians out of Richfield and the Wilderness in Cloquet oh, could make it to a championship oh, game at the Heritage. Be, they, they won't have enough tickets. No, <laughs> you're right, you're right. But, you know, those are things that we can only dream about. Right. And maybe it'll happen someday. Yeah. And uh, we'll just... Wait and see if the uh, Heritage Center will be a venue next year or in years to come. Sounds like they did a great job. And, uh, yeah, so we'll wait and see about that. And another thing on attendance, I think uh, I'd say the biggest problem was the locals didn't show up. And uh, Well, Jerry, i got to be honest with and you. And it's a fishing weekend, uh, well, fishing opener, right. Mother's Day. Exactly. And I was going to bring up those two thoughts. But when you said the prices, my first thought was, seems a little steep. But then you get six games. Yeah, I know. I know. But still, um, how many people go and see teams and games? They don't know anybody. It's not too often. Right. You know, and so, you know, granted, you can call it the Robertson Cup. It's the championship games. But who are they? Lone Star? Aston? Right. Where are they? You know, Aberdeen and uh, Janesville, two towns we're somewhat familiar with. But right. nonetheless, I you know, I don't want to certainly make that be a, an issue, but... Maybe it's something they can look at next year. And I think next year they are planning on having it the week after the Fisher Open if it does come back here. Well, you're absolutely right. It was a so terrible that can weekend. Get a, that'll hosting. get more people. The I fishing guess. opener in Minnesota. And, oh, let's have a hockey tournament up there that weekend. Because <laughs> they say 500,000 people go fishing. And we could have yeah. got extra 100 out of them. <laughs> yeah. Well, you didn't go fishing. No. No. I was fishing for pucks. <laughs> So uh, after it's all said and done, you call it a success here in Duluth? Yeah, overall, i say it was because uh, they, they planned it so good. Uh, the Heritage Center good, good. and the local people supported, I mean, uh, sponsors and that. They did a good job in helping out. And well, so, Jerry, I mean, yeah, Jerry DeMeo has got such a passion for this game. He's the president of the Heritage, and he's been right. doing a fantastic job out there since he took over. Uh, Ken Colquist, who worked with him, um, you know, a yeah. former hockey player uh, at high school and the college level here in Duluth. And, and again, yeah. you got to have a passion to do something like this, and I think that they have that out there. So, good. I'm glad to hear that. Right. So then now the only other – Two leagues that are really playing hockey right now is the USHL, and the only two teams left in there are Sioux City and Chicago, and uh, they're going at it one one. They're, it's one one the series right now, so it's the best out of five. So right now they're going this weekend. They'll be down in Chicago, and if it has to go to the fifth game, then it goes back to Sioux City on uh, next Tuesday, May twenty third. Do we have any local connections to these teams? We we have uh, Wyatt Amont oh, yeah. on the Chicago team. We got a couple Elk River kids. Wyatt um, played his ho high school hockey up at Hermantown. Right, and there's a there's a few uh, Minnesota kids on uh, Sioux City. Um, Michael Michael Miller. Michael. Uh, Michael Miller from yeah. Rapids. Yeah, oh, he's okay. down there playing. What's um, Am Amont's? What's his? Uh, Team, well, we're, where, uh, we're where did he just sign up? God, I remember. Yeah, 
right. He did commit. Yeah. That's not UMD. Okay. I know that. Yeah. <laughs> so then, um, what else? Oh, high school coaching. Wow. We uh, learned last week, uh, <laughs> late last week, that high school, uh, the head hockey coach up in Cloquet, Dave Essie, has uh, stepped down. Yeah. Too much um, bickering and it's too bad. Dave was a, uh, really, he was good for the kids. He, you know, he's an old school coach. He's the know. only coach I've known up there. Yeah. Who well, was the coach before him? McFarland. When was that? Yeah, he was in the, on the 90s <laughs> okay. when Jamie was was playing there. Oh, Jamie Langenbrenner. Geez. Yeah, Dave Essie uh, has uh, stepped down as head coach at Cloquet. And then we learned uh, a few weeks back, actually, that uh, Bruce Plant up at Hermantown, so two legendary high school coaches gone. Right. I mean, a lot of years those guys have put in. Essie's got about close to 20, and Bruce had close to 30 years. That's a lot of coaching. There was somebody on uh, social media that was re referring to Dave Essie as a youth player, like back in midgets. And he said, it was my job to shadow him. He says, I couldn't stop that kid. He says, there was one game we played. He said, we beat him 6-3. to three. He said, but Essie scored all three goals for his <laughs> ESCO team. Yeah, and uh, I think uh, on the Hermantown with Bruce Plant, I think uh, they'll be naming a coach um, any day now. Yeah. And so I, my, I think they're going to go with Pat Andrews. He was a Bantam coach, and then last year he helped out with uh, high school. Yeah. So I think they're planting the seed already. No. what was Jamie Langenbrenner's role up in Cloquet? He was a uh, assistant coach. And he's gone as well. Right. I think that things didn't work out. Different way yeah. they saw things, yeah. philosophy of the game. Yeah. And, you know, Jamie was there because of his kid. So he wanted to be close to his kid. Sure. So you can't blame him there. So yeah. we'll see what happens. I think the only player, only guy I can see right now that would be a fit for Cloquet's job would be uh, Brian Meisner. He, uh, he was assistant coach out with Corey uh, Millen over at uh, the wilderness oh, when okay. Corey was there. Right. So I think, and he's a Cloquet native. Ah, sure, sure. So, and he, he was an assistant coach up at Fairbanks, Alaska on uh, D1. Okay. So so he has hockey knowledge, and that's that would be my pick right now. So we'll see when they open up the job, because they got to find someone fast. Yeah. And... I tell you what, it's just um, one thing after another. <laughs> Hockey's changing. It's kind of sad, though, when you see these old coaches leave the game, you know. The game usually changes, too, a little bit. Well, it does. And to have two uh, long-time, long-tenured coaches, Dave Essie at Cloquet and Bruce Plant at Hermantown, uh, uh, both stepping down this season, yeah, those are some big shoes to fill. Also, uh, we learned over the weekend, uh, past week rather, that uh, Carson Coleman of the UMD Bulldogs was named captain. And uh, a kid from ESCO, captain of the UMD Bulldogs, played hockey at Cloquet. Right. Played under Essie. Dave Essie. Yeah. Good for Carson. He, he's all, he'll always give it 100%. You know? Exactly. That's why yeah. people like yeah. him. He might not score the 20 goals or something like that, but yeah. he's always going to be out there and giving every shift is going to 100%. Sure. And I love kids like that. Yep, yep. And they got a couple other assistant captains that are not bad either. Um, we got Adam, yep. Johnson Adam Johnson from Hibbing. Yep. Another, I mean, that's a local boy too. Yeah. And then uh, we got a kid out of, um, I think he's out of Canada, um, Parker Mackay. Yes, yes. I, yeah. I, I talked to him in the uh, locker room at the championships at the Frozen Four. And nice kid. Good. Yeah. He's a nice kid. He has, seems to have fun in the locker room. The Bulldogs, uh, they got a lot of big shoes to fill. Uh, Captain Dominic Toninano uh, graduated. Will be, uh, well, he's uh, property of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, Hunter Miska, the freshman goaltender, um, he's gone pro. Um, uh, Peonk, yeah, Neil Peonk is gone, and you know you lose guys like Al Follow to you know he was a senior obviously, but uh, you know I know last year after losing Cascasuo and Cameronissi and some of the other seniors, you know you kind of wondered how this team would be, and lo and behold they were uh, one foot away from getting to the uh, 
the championship, and uh, it didn't happen. Denver was able to, you know, get the better of them, barely. But uh, what's your outlook? What's your thoughts on the Bulldogs next season? Well, I think they're going to have to – they'll start out slow. It's going to be a learning process. process but there's a lot of so young you, kids. you don't think that this batch of young kids coming in can – I think at first, it's a big jump. I don't care if how yeah. good you were in the juniors. To jump up into D1, it's a big jump. Just like, you know, like Tufty, best high school player in the state. He struggled that first half. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and uh, by the way, um, they, the UMD did pick up a goalie. He's, he can't play next year, though, because he'll only be a senior he probably might play juniors too. It's on Zach Stetsko, from another Rapids. Grand Rapids, yeah. So they'll have two rapid goalies on that. Yeah. On there. Wow. And so they'll be looking for one a goalie that can come right in too. Yeah. So, and what I'm hearing, um, Deary is uh, probably has the best chance of being the starting okay. goalie. You know, that's the kid from Lacrosse. Is that where he's from? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we I'm learned, sure Shepard will uh, give him a lot of competition. <laughs> yeah, the other hunter. Yeah. We learned uh, Friday that uh, the Minnesota Wild, uh, they signed a three-year deal to air wild hockey games on WDSM radio, uh, 710 AM, really? 98.1 FM. Uh, WDSM will carry all regular season and playoff games as well as preseason contests. Uh, Vice President of Midwest Duluth, Sean Scramstead, said we are very pleased to have come to an agreement with the Wild to carry play-by-play -play for the next three years. The Minnesota Wild are an important part of our commitment to carry and support outstanding sports products in the Twin Ports. And uh, Kevin Faldness, the executive producer of Minnesota Wild Radio Network, says the Minnesota Wild are excited to call WDSM their flagship in Duluth and Superior. We've got a long working relationship with Midwest Communications and we're excited to extend that partnership to the great fans of the region. And uh, yeah, so this is going to be a little different. Uh, WDSM, known more for, well, it's political uh, talk, local and national. Rush Limbaugh, Sean Hannity, uh, and then you've got Packer football and Badger sports. And now we're going to add w, uh, wild hockey yeah. to the fray. So... With WDSM, how far out can you reach that game? WDSM is 10,000 watts. Okay. Uh, it reaches into Canada. Really? However, <laughs> at nighttime, they're under the FCC guidelines that have been in place for decades. Okay. They're a sunrise sunset station, and at night, at sunset, that power changes from a wider band to just basically a northern direction. And... Uh, but you do have the FM dial at 98.1. So there may be some challenges there. I don't know. But uh, all of northeastern Minnesota, uh, the range, Duluth, up to the uh, oh, Grand Portage, really, in the, in the border, will have coverage, uh, uninterrupted coverage. Hmm. Okay. So the Minnesota Wild uh, signed a deal uh, to air wild hockey on WDSM 710 AM and 98.1 FM. So that'll start this next year, next season. Next season, yeah. Okay. And those are all all the games, the playoff games, the preseason games. And uh, I worked on at WDSM, and we've already received some calls from people asking if Wild Hockey will uh, preempt the, the programming of, uh, you've got Michael Savage in the evening, maybe uh, Levin and some of the others. And yes, Minnesota Wild Hockey. All will, right, hockey over... Yeah, over uh, the, the they, political banter. They got trumped. Yes, they did. They did. Uh, WDSM, uh, I, I think this is good. Uh, Midwest yeah. Communications is a family-owned company operating over 70 radio stations in eight states, and Midwest Communications is based in Wausau, Wisconsin. Yeah, good. Yeah, I got some uh, more high school news. Uh, I don't know if you ever remember Jerry Hayes. He played hockey at Duluth Central. He was a coach for many years down and after Apple Valley won the state tournament, he came in there and coached yeah, for 15 not years. Really. Coached 15 years at Central? A Apple Valley. Oh, okay. Apple Valley. Huh. And then, uh, How long not, was he at Central? Well, no, he went to Central. Okay, okay. He went to Central. Gotcha. So now he's the coach at Irondale. 
Down in St. Paul. Yeah, northern, northern suburbs. Sure. Right above Roseville. Geez, I remember when they were in the tournament a long time okay, ago. Okay, but Jared. who was their player? Oh, gosh. This is more to the story. That's Refresh my memory. Remember. One of the top players that ever yeah. came out of Minnesota. Yeah. Scott Bustead. Sure, sure. That's uh, Nick Bustead's uh, uncle. Yeah. That plays for Florida Panthers right yep. now. A former golfer. Yeah. Okay. And he has one of the best, he had one of the best shots ever. And I mean, pro hockey, any level. Nick. Yeah. No. Well, Nick has a good shot too, but right. Scott. Okay. All right. And so what Scott does, he has shooting schools. The pros come into him, come into okay. the city's net. <laughs> Well, I was talking to Coach Randolph of Duluth East oh. during the Robertson Cup this week. Uh-huh. And he was telling me all these players that are going down to the cities for two days for the shooting schools at with Scott. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so Jake coming back into town, Dom Tonanato. Really? Yeah, they're all down there taking shooting classes okay. with them, you know. And the guy knows his stuff. Right yeah. away, he's telling Jake, like, you know, he had to change his stick, and he had to take this much off, and it's kind of weird, you know? Interesting. He, he knows his stuff. I mean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, when he was there, um, Zach Parisi was coming over for a class. <laughs> I mean, really? Yeah. Okay. So I'm mean, saying, he does a lot of pros yeah. that come into town mm -hmm. from all the other teams and that. So it's pretty neat. And while they're down there, they're taking skating lessons. They were using Andy Ness's whose mom, I think is Diane Ness, was a skating coach for 100 years down in the Twin Cities area. And uh, it's like, uh, what's her name, Hill up here. Zoe. Yeah. And uh, so Andy learned Mother from his mom. Mother of Sean Hill. So he, yeah. he's the Minnesota Wild skating coach. Okay. For years now. Yeah. And so he helped, uh, I mean, but now they're down there to some other guy down there. So they're all going through this guy now right. for skating. So it's never too late. You're always... Working on your game, you know, different, the fundamental stuff. Yeah, wow. And uh, now, it's kind of funny, you know, 10 years ago, you never really heard this, but now a bunch of the uh, northern boys are going down for these classes too now, the mm. high school, to take. When do these stay. classes take place? Well, you just set it up in that. And, okay. And so it's like you're there for one hour one day and then oh, one I hour see. the next okay. day. Okay, okay. But they're pretty expensive though, but yeah. if you... Pay attention and learn and then yeah. do what he's saying, your shot's going to get better. <laughs> yeah. Now, does Irondale still have a, a high school team? Yeah, that's why uh, Jerry Hayes is taking over that as coach okay. of the team. All right. Well, we've just got a few minutes here. The uh, NHL playoffs are down to the final four teams Nashville and Anaheim in the West, Pittsburgh and Ottawa in the East. Uh, we're going to take a couple of weeks off. And then we'll be back here the uh, first Monday after Memorial Day, and we'll kind of wrap up some NHL talk and any other uh, hockey news that we can... Uh, and highlight the season. Yeah. What's going on? Yeah. Uh, until then, though, well, we're going to take a short break. Uh, again, a couple of weeks, and we'll be back after uh, Memorial Day weekend. In the meantime, you can go to our Facebook page and like us there and check out some of the content there. Go to our website, minnesotahockeyconnection.com, and check that out. And our YouTube page. And I ran into a fellow that was working at a local gas station and said he liked watching the show on YouTube. There you go. So appreciate that. And uh, we want to thank the staff at PAC TV, where this program is produced, in City Hall in downtown Duluth. And Jerry, we'll be back here in two weeks to yeah. drop the puck. We'll be in June then. We'll see you then. Okay.